Hi, I'm Glenn. So nice to have you back drawing with me again. This is the second of two videos where we're designing a play park. The original idea was sent in by the girls Year 4 5 Rayton in Q Victoria. Hi girls, thanks so much. I'm really enjoying this um, drawing even though it's very challenging with those curly slides. Video 1 was creating the basic structure. Let's have some fun today adding some design elements. First we'll be carving out a few of the cubes, just like you would in Minecraft. I'm squiggling out a few of the lines that we'll need to erase. And we'll be drawing a flat platform that you can climb inside. Start with your splat on that point. Let's just redraw those lines in. Now I'm going to slide up maybe 3 millimeters and draw those two lines. Now you can see the thickness of the platform. And now draw in the back of the platform with two lines. I'm just using light lines in case I need to erase some of them later on. I'm also sketching in some human stick figures to give the drawing a bit of life. I'm now darkening in those two lines because it helps our eye to pick out that that's the overhanging roof now. If we wanted to hollow out some more so that the person could walk in that direction, what would we need to add? Well, that's the far corner, so let's extend the corner along. Sketching figures in also helps our eye to pick out where the surfaces are, what they're standing or climbing on. And I'm also wondering what it's like to play inside this play park, um, or in this case, hang upside down. I've removed those figures because I want to draw a step. So that's the bottom of the step. We'll go up with the point of the splat there, come across. So you can imagine that's where I step up. So we need to add a flat platform now, as long as you like. And then if you want another step up, same again. Up, across. That's the top of the step. And that's where it goes backwards. Easy. Let's draw a hole to climb into. We'll draw it in this cube. So replace your splat, trace the full ellipse, slide, and then give that hole some thickness. That's the corner inside the cube. Just for the advanced drawers, if you looked at the wall with another hole in it going in the other direction, what would it look like? Hey, we'll need to design a way to get up to this hole that's so high. In my case, I think I'll design a rock wall. Let me speed up the drawing of this. I'm going to try drawing a square hole around this side of the wall. Simply copy all of those lines all the way around. Use a rule or a splat if you'd like to get it a bit neater. Draw a short line from that corner on the splat angle. And then two more lines make it look as if it's got some wall thickness. And if we're looking inside, you may want to draw in a corner. If you'd like to draw a ramp, here's how it's done. Can you see that line, that splat line? Well, we need to draw one down here on the same angle. You can place it anywhere. I think I'll come up a little bit off the bottom of the page and draw in my line. Now it's simply a case of choosing that point and joining it to that point. You can use a ruler. So that's not a splat angle line. That's just a ramp. And we'll join the far ends. And then we're going to need to erase the lines that we can't see because they're hidden behind the ramp. I'm using a piece of paper and I'm stretching it tight between my fingers so it doesn't buckle. And that helps me cover up the lines that I want to keep. Here's how to draw a hand railing. From that point, come up maybe two centimeters and then the same amount from that corner. Make sure that line's straight up and down or vertical. Now join the ends of those lines and there's your hand rail. To carefully remove some lines, let's use the paper shield method. Let's draw another handrail on the far side. Here's how to turn your ramp into stairs. Find that point and then sketch a line straight down. Now we're going to go on the splat angle out. And we're basically going to repeat that down and then come out until you hit that line. And from that point again, we're just going to keep going down and then on the splat angle, come out until you hit that line. 
And keep doing that all the way until you reach the bottom. And then we've got one more step to show you. From each corner, we'll have an edge. So each of those corners is going to have exactly the same line. So let's go to the first one. On that splat angle, boom, boom. Try and keep them all as parallel as you can. Probably would be better going from the bottom upwards. That way you could see each line that you've drawn to make sure that they're parallel. You do this lightly because it's definitely going to take you a few practices if you want to crack those stairs. Okay, and there's just one more line to erase, so I'm going to try and use my uh, paper shield method. So I'm covering up the stairs, I don't uh, want to have those erased once I've got them right. Stretch the paper between your fingers and then carefully work down. Good. I'm drawing some cutouts in the wall to imagine that someone could uh, get their feet in there and climb up the side. So there's a little figure, and what about two people sitting on the stairs? and someone else crawling through and some bold adventurer making their way up the rock wall. The trick with drawing stick figures is to have a bend in the knee. Here I'm adding some thickness to each of the feet under the playground simply by drawing another line beside it. The squiggly line at the bottom is where it would go into the bark chips or into the rubber mat. I'm removing the flat roof on the top and I'm going to have a go at drawing an angled roof. Here's how you do it. Find a halfway along that line and put a point. Now measure up say three centimeters and place a mark. Then simply join that mark to both of the corners. Use a ruler. Okay, now let's do the same thing here. Halfway along, we're coming up our three centimeters. Place a mark three centimeters up and remember we joined it to each of the corners of the cube. Great, we're nearly there. This is really important. Make sure you splat straight up and down and draw a line on the right splat angle. It's not long enough so we're extending it, but use a really light line. Make it as long as you can. Let's do the same thing from this point. So we're placing the splat, we're going at the left angle, and we're drawing a light line. Now, where those two lines cross over, that's how long the lines need to be. So I can come back and darken or firm those lines in. And lastly, the line, the corner where the roof turns. So join those two points together. If you got that the first time, you're incredible. Let's put a separate roof on this tower, measure six centimeters up from that point, and that's the apex. Now just um, join that point down to each corner of the cube and there's my roof. I tried adding some design detail, maybe tiles to the roof, but it was a little tricky. Here's how to draw small round windows. If you're using that ellipse, put the splat sideways on a ruler just like that. And that's the correct um, angle to hold the splat on. If I wanted to draw some around the other side of the cube, over here, then I'll need to flip it over. But notice how I've still got it flat on a ruler. So I can move the splat, but as long as I keep the ruler flat, those round windows will look in the right orientation. For using the large ellipses, remember the splat is always straight up and down. Let's give that wall a little bit of thickness by adding a line behind it, otherwise it looks like a paper cutout. Here's how to draw a flat square on the ground. Two splat lines, rotate, line the corners up, and two more lines. That could be a rubber mat, or it could be a square sand pit. Let's see, I'm going to come down just a little bit and add some thickness to it. So now that it's sort of something up off the ground, um, maybe it's a platform and it's the base for what looks like a flying fox. I will definitely need somewhere to launch off. So here's how to use the splat to draw a tire. Once you've drawn that cylinder, then we make it look hollow by sketching in an ellipse just inside there and there's the 3D effect. 
Hey, thank you, Year 4 5 Rayton Girls School. This has been a wonderful drawing, very challenging, but I'm sure you'll produce amazing work and I can't wait to see it. Thanks very much for joining me. I'm Glenn. Bye for now.